eventful week for the NC State Wolfpack after two dramatic finishes on the road. Kevin Keach's squad returns today to their home court in PNC Arena where Markel Johnson and C.J. Bryce will lead the pack against the Citadel in the second half of our ACC basketball doubleheader. When you think about NC State, I want you to think about playing for the front of the jersey and not the back. Here's Johnson heaving from the midcourt line. He got it! He got it! He got it! He got it! State wins! State wins! Yes, sir! Uh, when you talk about the passionate fan base, I think it's the best thing in the world. At NC State, we're going to pride ourselves in being the best conditioned team in the country. We're going to work harder than anybody else. Beverly for the win! Got it! Unbelievable! When you talk about two national championships, when you talk about uh, three Final Fours, when you talk about 14 Sweet 16s, then why not NC State? Hello everyone, happy holidays, just three days until Christmas, but before these teams head on break, NC State and the Citadel will battle it out here in Raleigh. Citadel opening for a Christmas miracle tonight, while the Wolfpack look to start Christmas break on a very, very merry note. Welcome you courtside inside PNC Arena alongside former Notre Dame standout Jordan Cornette. I'm Sam Ravage. Happy holidays, everybody. Glad to have you with us here tonight. Uh, Jordan, in many ways, this NC State Wolfpack team has flown under the radar, and they have been okay with that. But this is a game, if you lose, you'll be further, further under the radar. They don't want to lose this game. Yeah, I'm really excited, Sam, to watch this North Carolina State team. Six of their top seven guys return. They don't have that marquee win yet. It won't be a marquee win if they get it today, but I'm excited to see them live, to see what kind of team this is and if we're ready to talk about them as one of the top teams in this conference why not why not it has been a wide open conference so far this season hey a season recap for this Wolfpack team an opening night lost to Georgia Tech in the ACC conference play DeVoe led the Jackets in that win the first ACC win of the season over Wake Forest CJ Bryce led the way with 18 points there then Markel Miracle in Greensboro Johnson's half court shot to save the Wolfpack and then the Wolfpack came up short against unbeaten Auburn a couple of days ago Auburn ended on a 15 to 9 run in the final four minutes but North Carolina State really had Auburn on the ropes. C.J. Bryce will play tonight. However, he is not in the starting lineup, the leading scorer for the Wolfpack. He is certainly an impact guy, and the offense runs through him. Why is he so lethal and important to this offense? Well, Sam, in a world where everybody's infatuated with the three-point shot, C.J. Bryce, his decision-making is pristine in pursuit of life inside the arc. Right there, great look from three. Nobody defending him. Sees a good one, pursues a great one into a sweet spot at the elbow. Knocks down the two-point shot. C.J. Bryce does a magnificent job of finding spots inside the arc to do his damage. Same place right here, but as a receiver this time. On the catch, couple probing dribbles in isolation now. Elite spacing, three guys beyond the arc. D.J. Funderburg, you'd want him to space more out in the paint, but that's all good. C.J. Bryce is going to identify his space right here to make some work and do some damage. Elevates, no contest, finishes off the play because of elite decision-making. Then finally right here in the ball screen scenario, Funderburg's going to come set the ball screen, and when you're as deadly as Bryce is inside the arc, well, that defense, they're going to swarm like a magnet to you, and then the world is Bryce's. As a distributor, he can give it downhill to Funderburg finishing at the rim, but Bryce again sees a spot. It's a sweet one. This time it's downhill to finish at the rim. Bryce, he can make the three. His percentages are great, but he likes to do work inside the arc. Will he do that today? I'm excited to see. Again, C.J. Bryce not starting. However, on the other side, the Citadel will be starting Caden Rice, and he is the guy that they will go through offensively to try and get some threes. This is a very, very exciting team to watch. They're averaging over 87 points a game this Citadel team, and they will fire up some threes. Yeah, and this is a North Carolina State team, an NC State team that has seen high-powered offenses. They just came off of playing one in Auburn, so they know what it takes. They know they got to be up defensively. They like high pace, too. The Citadel
Citadel is going to have problems keeping up with the firepower and the depth of this Wolfpack squad. Just about ready for tip here inside a packed house in PNC Arena a couple of days before Christmas. Our officials tonight, Ted Valentine, Mark Sherp, and Jamel Spearman. And the tip out of bounds going to go with the Wolfpack to start it off here. Take a look at this NC State Wolfpack lineup. Again, a lot of offense going to go through Markel Johnson and C.J. Bryce, who is not starting tonight. Freshman Manny Bates has been one of the leading shot blockers in the entire country. And Braxton Beverly leading the team, probably the best three-point shooter on the team. Devin Daniels gets fouled as he drives the lane and will go to the line to shoot two. Small sample size, only the first possession, but you get an idea of the action from NC State. Everybody catches in basketball position, looking to make a play, driving, kicking, elite ball movement. First foul on Eddie Davis, the third, the 6'7 grad transfer from Hartford out of Las Vegas, Nevada. First one down for Devin Daniels. Redshirt junior out of Battle Creek, Michigan, transferred from Utah following his freshman season. Averaging 10.7 a game. For the Citadel out of Charleston, South Carolina. Look at their starting five as North Carolina State brings some pressure here. Caden Rice, leading scorer for this team. Alex Reed getting a start. He is from Raleigh, North Carolina. Has a lot of family in the stands tonight. Eddie Davis, the third, is going to walk there and turn it over to the Wolfpack. And this will be a challenge for the Citadel all evening long. North Carolina State's going to speed you up. They're going to try to take you out of your comfort zone. Citadel wants to hunt those threes. Can they find the positions to do so? Down low, Bates' shot is no good. Rebounded by the Citadel. Up the court quickly. And again, down on the floor, scrapping for it. Whistle blow is going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow to the Citadel. You know, just doing some research on this Bulldogs team, Jordan. I mean, they, they will fire up about 33s a game. And you, we, you and I were talking. They're going to have to fire up about 30 to 40 in this game if they want to uh, have some success against North Carolina State. Eddie Davis's three is no good. Davis is going to challenge Bates to defend out there. Bates, a rim protector, not used to defending on the perimeter. Will be challenged there all evening. Markel Johnson in and out. Make no mistake about it, Citadel wants to play fast. Even in transition in the half court, they want to get quick looks. Here come the turnovers. Another turnover, and Devin Daniels will slow it up on the other half. Both these teams averaging over 80 points a game. Should see a high-scoring game there. Devin gets it stripped and back the other way, the Bulldogs. There's a three from Caden Rice off the back iron. Beverly in a battle for it, and it's going to go to NC State. Head coach for NC State and the Wolfpack, Kevin Keats, in his third season was very generous with his time during his shoot-around earlier today. Became the 20th head coach of the program back in 2017. A very fiery offense for Coach Keats in his two full seasons so far. They have averaged over 80 points a game and again doing that this season. Hey, Sam, look, we're two minutes into the game. We got one point. I was promised offense. <laughs> These are two explosive offenses. I want to see the ball go in the basket. There you go. Markel Johnson right on the cue, averaging 13 and a half a game. The senior guard out of Cleveland. And really giving it to me from the three-point line, a place where he has struggled the most, shooting a mere 28% beyond the arc. Letting me know he can hear me from the sidelines here. Caden Rice driving baseline, has it knocked around. And the Pack come up with it. Third turnover for the Citadel in this one. Devin Daniels bobbles it a bit on the post. Good ball movement. Andre knocks it down. Pat Andre, the grad transfer from Lehigh, has been a nice pickup for Coach Keats and the Wolfpack so far this season. That is a specialist. Markel Johnson, a specialist to distributing the ball. They connect for that three. That one rims in and out 
from Fletcher. Seven nothing NC State here early on. Beverly will try from three. That rims in and out. A couple of ones that have been halfway down for the Wolfpack have not gone. Reed will drive. Nice athletic play for Alex Reed. The Raleigh, North Carolina native coming off a season high. 16 points and a triple overtime win for the Citadel. Their last game out. Nice drive for Devin Daniels. NC State will be able to get whatever they want on that side offensively. Locking in, defending, and protecting the arc. That will be the challenge. Rice is shot no good. Follows his own rebound, and the Bulldogs up with it. Fresh shot clock. Another quick shot, knocking it down, Alex Reed. A couple of quick points for the junior. They're going to extend this pressure to Citadel, Will, mainly so they don't have to defend too long on the shot clock in the half court. Speed this thing up a little bit, knock some clock off of the shot clock. Markel Johnson dribbling in the paint. That one knocked around. Daniels up with it, and he finds the bucket for two. There's no size. No rim protectors, no shot blockers for the Citadel. Wolfpack should live in the trenches. Five points for Devin Daniels tonight. Mid-ranger for Reed, no good. Along with rebounding the ball and turning the ball over, applying pressure, what can the Citadel do to keep up with a team like NC State tonight? Got to try and keep guys in front. Got to try with help side to take away driving lanes. They don't have that eraser, so the challenge with poor defense. That one blocked away, saved by Beverly. Pat Andre, another three, no good. Pat Andre has really come in and applied some pressure and also been a great beyond the three-point line. Is that one from Davis, the third, no good. Andre and Braxton Beverly will have three-point shooting contests after practice to see who can knock down a couple of threes. This is a huge block, and NC State coming out with a six-point lead here. Well, I talked about the offense. Thought we'd get a lot of it, but I'll settle for highlights like this. D.D. Devin Daniels. The denial. Eleven to five. We'll pack on top. And checking into the game now, C.J. Bryce. And you look at the improvement from this year to last year, it's been pretty dramatic. Yeah, and C.J. Bryce just had to get acclimated to the program. We're talking with Coach Keats. He said, look, this is a guy who came with me from Wilmington. And it didn't feel like it was his team, so he couldn't have that voice. Maybe lacked some of that confidence. But now he's fully into it, understands that this is his team, along with Markel Johnson, and is not taking any, is taking the liberties of saying, I'm going to go out there and get mine. And his decision-making has been what's been most impressive. And that's why the percentages bear out. 54 from the field percentage-wise, 48% from the audience. Jericho Hellum is also checking into the game, did not start tonight. Another leading score. Shot clock down to three. Markel Johnson shot no good, offensive board. And that's what's going to hurt the Citadel tonight. And Hellum's at 6'7". That's a guy coming from the perimeter that can also rebound. You got Futterberg and now Danny Dixon, a welcome sight, which now gives Coach Keats a roster of nine. He wants to play a lot of bodies and overwhelm you. Wolfpack can really flex their muscle now. Back and down, Kalen Harris on the post, no good. Wolfpack want to press. Helms with the fake from the elbow. No good. Kalen Harris with the board. Reed thought about it. Rudy Fitzgibbons, the third double team, looking for help. Tyson Baptiste. Fletcher A.B. fade away, no good. Rebound to D.J. Funderburg. And with the size you have on the floor now, Dixon and Funderburg towering over this very small Citadel team. That's where you really got to flex your muscle. Don't get cute about it. Beat him up in the trenches. Jump ball, possession arrow to the Wolfpack. Head coach Duggar Baucom in his fifth season at the Citadel. Seven teams to lead NCAA in scoring in his tenure there. 2014 NCAA appearance as the head coach at VMI. Was there for 10 years between 05 to 15. 
finish there for DJ Funderburk, averaging 10.3 a game, the redshirt junior. Funderburk should be thinking, this is a game where I put up big numbers. It's 6'10". It's rare air up there when he is rising to finish. Nobody can challenge him with, I don't even know if you can call it a front line for the Citadel. All guards out there. Their biggest guy may be 6'5". Listen, it's 6'6", but they should dominate down there. 8-2, to two, the points advantage in the paint right now. A couple of changes for the Bulldogs here with 12.47 left to go, 15-5, Wolfpack on top. Dixon and Eddie Davis battling down low, whistle underneath. Foul beyond Danny Dixon. Second foul on him already. And he'll check out. Pat Andre back in. Figure it's going to take some time to get Danny Dixon back into the rhythm of things this season. But it's used to have him back, yeah. Sam. It allows them to use Thunder Birkin at the four and the five. Gives them some versatile lineups, but more importantly, gives Coach Keats another body to implement his system of run, run, turn you over, and wear you down. Jericho Hellams, the and one opportunity here. From the famed Chaminade out of St. Louis, a couple really good players have come out of there that know how to do this, score the basketball. Ever heard of Bradley Beal? <laughs> Jason Tatum? Right behind them on the all-time scoring list is that man right there, Jarrah Cole Helmets. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, I guess, when you're behind those two guys. They, they've had pretty good careers so far. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to be right behind yeah. them and what they've achieved. You'll do pretty good for yourself in this basketball life. If you're behind somebody, you may as well be behind them. <laughs> that one knocked out of bounds, going the Wolfpack way. Got to give credit to Wolfpack. They've really defended beyond that three-point line. That is going to be the equalizer, the thing that enables the Citadel to hang. They've executed their game plan, making these guys, running them off the three-point line, contesting everything. It's the only real place that the Citadel can narrow that gap where clearly the talent is overwhelmingly in the Wolfpack's favor. Something to keep an eye on. Braxton Beverly came up a bit limp after trying to go for a rebound. He has checked out and is at the end of the bench for the Wolfpack now. Getting checked on by the training staff. Shot for Jericho, Helms off the mark. Andre with the rebound, throws it out of bounds. 17-5, North Carolina State out to an early lead here, just under 12. We'll be right back from the PNC Arena. Our next All Access with Carolina Basketball is tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And our third episode of the season, our cameras follow the Tar Heels to the Bahamas for Battle for Atlantis. And the coaching staff reflects on the Heels' return to historic Carmichael Arena. As we all know and have heard by now, Cole Anthony out for four to six weeks, although the Tar Heels getting back in their winning ways, at least with a win over UCLA. Stripped away, Pat Andre back the other way for the Wolfpack, pulls up. And in and out, Eddie Davis, the third with the board. North Carolina, North NC State, able to build this thing a little bit with this run, 8-0, by defending this three. A contest from Andre, a missed three, and now the Wolfpack look to run. They've been able to build by being patient and disciplined on the defensive end. Hellams for three. three. Jericho Hellams got seven tonight. Extends the lead to 15 for the Wolfpack. Rice will try for long range. No good. The Citadel try to come out here and fire from three. They are one for nine, Jordan. Give Funderburg space, operate, room to operate here. Just get it right back, repost. Great decision here for Markel Johnson. Let Funderburg do work. Mismatch down low in the end one opportunity. You should be a coach, Jordan Cornette. It's really smart. It's just really smart decision for Markel Johnson, a guy who averages nearly seven assists per game. As a sophomore, two seasons ago, led the conference in assists, and it's 
just high IQ ball. Understanding that at 6'6", the defender on 6'10", Funderburg, who's athletic enough to rise and finish over the top, it's our best field goal chance right here. He didn't have it the first time. Give it back. Get back down there post, big foul. I'm going to give it right back to you. DJ Funderburg averaging 10.3 on the season. Misses the end one opportunity. Some more pressure from the Wolfpack here. On the miss, the Bulldogs in trouble. Get out of it. Baptiste pass to the corner. And to the hoop, Caden Rice. And for those watching, wondering where Braxton Beverly is, he took a blow to the back. Got the wind knocked out of him, we're being told, and being taken to the back just for precautionary reasons. Uh, not ruled out of this game by any means. Uh, expected to return, but we'll wait and see. Dangerous pass there. Eddie Davis, the third, picks it off. Into the corner, Rudy Fitzgibbons, the third, with the three. First points in over five minutes for the Citadel. And they needed that. Young man that shoots 47% from three. And look, I know the opponent was Piedmont two games ago, but got 25 in that one, so a confident score. Can you get it going here? Pat Andre off the front iron, rebounded by the freshman. Manny Bates down low. And for those wondering where Piedmont is, ask Sam, I don't know. I actually don't know either, so you set me up to fail there. <laughs> <laughs> but he had 25 against him. Hey, 25 in a Division One game, that's... I didn't have 25 against anybody. You could leave me in the gym for 30 minutes by myself, I wouldn't get 25. What was your career high? I was a shot blocker. Sam, that didn't answer my question. That's not your dirty laundry. <laughs> that didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a smooth deflection? No. What was your career high? I was a shot blocker, yeah. <laughs> there will be no repost. Don't throw the ball back down low to me there. I'm not shooting it. C.J. Bryce, one for two from the line. Just his first point of the game. And NC State's pressure is not the full court pressure was in the previous two seasons under Coach Keats. Because they don't have as deep a bench this year due to injuries, they apply the majority of that pressure in the half court, exploring those traps. Still turning their opponent over at a very high clip, but doing it in the half court. 8.6 steals per game. That ranks fourth in the ACC. The ball movement there, Kalen Harris trying the baseline, double team. Some more good ball movement. Fitzgibbons the third, no good. Again, solid ball movement from the Citadel, but guys helping and recovering for the Wolfpack to challenge and ultimately create misses. Andre got knocked on the shot. So he'll go to the line. Tyson Baptiste, second foul. 15 foul for the Citadel with 8.52. Left to go here in the first half. Now back to your point, too, on the pressure for NC State. Coach was very happy about the recruiting class that he is bringing in. They inked five players from the class of 2020 and currently have the fifth best recruiting class in the country coming in next year, according to 24-7 sports and rivals. So you got to be excited about that if you're a Wolfpack fan. Sit out with Coach Keats for a couple minutes. He'll be like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to be a good recruiter. Charismatic, very engaging, incredibly entertaining, high IQ basketball guy that wins. Two for 13 from beyond the arc for the Citadel tonight. That drive to no avail for Rudy Fitzgibbons, the third. CJ Bryce doing work on the post as a block gets his own deflection. Devin Daniels for three. No good, and the rebound by the point guard, Rudy Fitzgibbons, the third. Wide open down low. Kalen Harris finding the open spot on the floor. CJ Bryce, no good, and Manny Bates with the follow. The freshman can jump out of the gym, and he is also, Jordan, a shot blocker, almost one of the best in the nation so far this year. 
And that's where Bates will get the lion's share of his scoring, just being active. Second chance opportunities running the floor. And defensively, he's made an immense impact as that rim protector, allowing this perimeter to take the risks that it does on so many occasions. Look at the three turnovers. Fitzgibbons, a couple of threes in the last minute. He's got six points tonight. Devin Daniels takes it himself. Back the other way for the Citadel. They're trying to move quick. Rudy Fitzgibbons with it blocked by the third blessed shot blocker in the ACC. Quickly the other way, C.J. Bryce. The acrobatic finish. Starting to open up here with under seven left to go. Eddie Davis the third knocks it down. Bulldogs starting to heat up a little bit here. But look at that, Jordan. 16 threes already. We haven't even finished the first half yet. 16 attempts for the Bulldogs. 16 threes will be very welcomed if you're the Citadel. <laughs> yeah. 16 attempts. Daniels kicks to Johnson, extra pass to Bryce. No good. More that scrappy half-court defense for Devin Daniels. Harris on the post. Bryce got bumped and ruled the walk. Going the other way. I'll tell you what, Sam, I know what Manny Bates won't be asking for this holiday season. Athleticism off the CJ Bryce miss. He's already got that on tens, the put back finish. Then in the open floor where this team truly thrives. CJ Bryce with the kiss. Where's the mistletoe? We mentioned Braxton Beverly being checked out for precautionary reasons. Here's a look as you see that loose ball right around the ACC logo. A little jolt, look like the back, kind of the torso area, clearly visibly shaken up somewhat. We are now being told that he will not return, being left out of this game for precautionary reasons because of what you just saw there on the video. One of the more lethal three-point threats for this NC State team. 136 of them in his first two seasons. The most in program history in a two-year span. Freshman and sophomore campaigns. 45% from deep to this point for Beverly, so certainly something to keep an eye on. That team. You get Danny Dixon back, you're yeah. gonna look like you're gonna be as close to full go as possible. And then you lose Beverly for this afternoon, this evening. Pat Andre's three is no good. The Citadel may not be hitting a lot of threes, but NC State not that much better. Four for 16. But they haven't let it get out of hand by the three threes they hit in the span of about four minutes of gameplay to not let it get crazy out of hand. 13-point game, definitely not in striking distance quite yet, but it hasn't turned ugly because of the ability to knock down a few. They're going to shoot them. It's a volume-shooting three-point team. So at any point, they could go on a run if they generate some stops. Down low, whistle underneath. Basket will be waved off. And the foul going to be on the Citadel. Wolfpack just always have that one in the chamber. They can always go down low. If they can't get the three-point shot going, can't get transition, they can beat you up on the block with this matchup. Foul will be on Webster, his first. Johnson thought about it. Gives to Devin Daniels, no good. Andre with the offensive board. The follow is no good. It's a lazy attempt on a putback from Andre. It's an unforced error. Turnover gives it back to him. Pat Andre to the hole, no good. Gets his own board, puts it back up. 
That's going up with the purpose. The previous sequence, he kind of just finessed it, lofted it up. Not a disciplined delivery that time. Planted off two feet, powered up, punctuated. A lot of history from your days at Notre Dame and also the Andre family. That's a name that Notre Dame fans certainly know is Tim playing for Notre Dame and Tim kept and his father during the Digger Phelps days. But how about this? Nice follow. Nice finish from Pat Andre. Pops tells you to follow your shot, Sam. That's what he does. Hey, keep in mind this Sunday, our ACC Network weekly basketball studio show, Nothing But Net, will return. Kelsey Riggs, Luke Hancock, Carlos Boozer, and Dallin Cuff will look back at the best games from last week and preview the week ahead, Sunday, 8 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Coming up right after our game tonight, four ACC teams ranked in the top 25. You got Louisville, Duke, Virginia, Florida State. However, Virginia losing tonight to South Carolina. Markel Johnson not giving up on the play. Couldn't ultimately create the possession. But love the extra effort. Look how he guards here. Doesn't give up on a play at all. This is a scrappy half-court offense, excuse me, half-court defense for the Wolfpack. And the Thunderbird for wrapping him around, preventing Davis from diving for an easy layup finish. First foul on DJ Thunderbird tonight. Funderburg's got two field goal attempts. Funderburg should have, I, I would have liked that there's only three minutes left in the first half, but he should have taken a good six or seven shots with his superior size advantage down low and his offensive skill set. That needs to be a concerted effort in the second half to establish the bigs. Keep them interested. These guys do so much to make this thing go. Reward them every now and again. That's what uh, Coach Keats was saying, too. He was saying, guys coming in now don't necessarily want to be labeled as the five. Everyone wants to be the four or the three if you're 6'10", like DJ Funderburg. You want to get out and shoot that three. I know Boozer will make that point for me back home in Bristol in studio because <laughs> uh, he's working with guards at Hancock and Cuff. Funderburg, athletic play in transition. Fitzgibbons trying on the other end to equalize and does. Eight points for Rudy Fitzgibbons, the third. And that one just too easy for DJ Funderburg. 35-16, 2 33 left to go in the first half. Fitzgibbons listed at six feet tall. I yeah. promise you, being courtside, that young man's 5'9". And he is doing work here on the court. Fearless competitor, he's got some baskets to go. Davis the third on again from three, knocked out of bounds. And going the way of the Wolfpack. I asked for more Funderburg. Funderburg delivered here in transition. Markel Johnson setting the pace. There's that athleticism, great focus to catch and finish. And then again, these are hustle plays. You run the floor, you are rewarded. You love playing with guards that are going to find you if you put forth the effort with the rim runs. Trap here from the Bulldogs of the Citadel. Under two left to go here in the first. Markel Johnson splits at the free throw line. He is quick. There's big switching defenses from the Citadel there. It was a 2-3 zone set up, and Markel Johnson knows an easy way to break it is penetration from the top of the key. Finds a pass. He was... That one back up and in by Eddie Davis, the third, and a timeout called by the Citadel. 17-point lead for NC State. A minute 30 left to go in the first. And no one knows more about the ACC than Mark Packer and Wes Durham. And tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, they'll take you through the last decade with the top games, players, and plays. The Packer and Durham Decade in Review Show right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you what, if you want to know what's going on in the ACC, Packer and Durham is your best bet Monday through Fridays. That is gospel to me. It's like going to church. <laughs> Come out of there a better man after those, those few hours. 
Devin Daniels. Devin Daniels tacking on to his total tonight. He's got seven. Three hours of great information. Under a minute in the first half. Reed, the Raleigh native, up and in. Alex Reed has got seven. A young man that averages six points per game, really trying to give this team a lift. Doing it inside the arc, not one of their best shooters, only 16 attempts there. Trying to get them in pursuit of twos. Kel Johnson was looking for the foul, got a late whistle. And he'll go to the line for two. What do you think his most improved part of his game has been? I think the fact that Coach Coach Keats has continued to ask him to do more with every passing season. At first, especially that sophomore season, he said, you got the piece around you, just, just, just distribute. He did so and was the leader of the conference there. This season as a senior returning, giving this team some buzz, being that senior point guard, he said, okay, not only do I want you to distribute, score it a little bit. And he's done both. I mean, you look at his averages, Nearly uh, just over 13 points per game. Those assists staying right just to kick below 70. Rebounds a little bit. He started off his first three games shooting very poorly, 23% from the field. But in the last seven games, he's really found his groove, getting that field goal percentage in that time of seven games of 49%. He just does what coach asks, and that's what you want at your point guard in a position, an extension of your coach, and great faith from coach to play. This, by the way, is the 100th game in a Wolfpack jersey for Markel Johnson, the senior from Cleveland. That's a feat in and of itself to stay healthy for 100 games in the ACC. About a three-second difference between shot and late game clock. That one off the mark and rebounded. NC State has to go. C.J. Bryce, the last second shot. No good. 40 to 22, NC State came out hot and finished shot. North Carolina State defensively did what they were supposed to, defended a three-point shot, making the Citadel beat them inside the arc. Then NC State found some turnovers to get them going in transition and really establish themselves on the inside. Matt Andre had a good half, as did many of the Wolfpack. We're going to hear from the guys in Bristol on the other side of the break right here on the ACC Network. The Howling Cow has been churning out premium ice cream for North Carolina State fans everywhere. And they also, why not, produce a little bit of eggnog. But Jordan, I know you like that, a little ice cream, a little sprinkles. What's your, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream, by the way? Or do you like to mix it up? Uh, I, I'm out of here. I'm going. <laughs> yeah, he gone. He gone. Can I leave? <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave. <laughs> the Howling Cow, are you kidding me? This body's no accident. Now I'm hungry. You want me to work for a second half here? Yeah. Are we, you kidding me? The we, rainbow sprinkles. You like the rainbow sprinkles? You put that on anything, I'm in. All right, DJ. How's that for analysis? We'll, we'll, look, we'll get some more ice cream after. We'll take care of you, buddy. I promise. Thank you. Uh, DJ Funderburk, uh, a good first half, led the way with eight points. Uh, but I know that you would like to see a little bit more out of him. All right, so you said you're going to feed me. That's cool. But NC State better feed the big fella yeah. down low. He's not going to start this second half. But when he comes in to this contest, 4-4 four, four, perfect from the field. Continue to establish him on the low block. Heck, he's a skilled player. He can even pass it. He'll open up three-point looks for the greedy perimeter. No, I'm kidding, but these guys got to establish him. Uh, that should be the lighthouse move forward. Credit the Wolfpack defense, though. You look at Caden Rice and Kalen Harris, two guys that combined for 28 points per game, held to 1 of 11, combined in a mere two points. So the Citadel down by uh, a couple of points here at the half. They certainly need to start clipping on some threes. And the turnover is not going to help them. Quickly, C.J. Bryce in the open floor. Nice bounce pass. And if the Wolfpack start to turn the Citadel over as well, as the Citadel only had seven turnovers in the first half, if that gets lopsided, this game truly opens up. Because what the Citadel doesn't do is generate points the hard-earned way by getting to the free throw line. That's not what they do. And if NC State does a lot of this, this one's going to get ugly quickly here in the second stance. Fletcher, A.B. from the corner, fadeaway three, no good. Now four for 19 for the Bulldogs of the Citadel. 
Markel Johnson out of the gates had three turnovers quickly and settled in with only one more turnover the majority of that second half. He must continue to take care of it, allowing his guys to be put in great positions. Like Devin that. Daniels wide open. Not a hand in the face to be found. Doesn't have to be the highlight pass, the scoring pass. Setting his guys up to be special. Ten points for Daniels tonight. Cross court pass to Rice, and maybe he can start getting going. That would help a lot. That is paramount for the Bulldogs. Young man that averages nearly 15 points per game, just a tick below 40% beyond the arc. They're looking to him to get him going. And they're looking at Kalen Harris as well. Without Hayden Brown, your leading scorer, a guy who can go inside and out, still out with injury and injured hamstring. Those two guys have to be great night in and night out, especially against a superior opponent like NC State. Yeah, there's Caden Rice, number 11 for the Bulldogs. 6'6", junior out of Columbia, South Carolina. 14.4 points a game this year, averaging 3.1 three-pointers made tonight. Just three points. Did not score in the first half. His first points of the game coming here in the early part of the second. C.J. Bryce isolating Rice there. Good defense from Rice. Rice at 6'6 has the best body to compete against this Wolfpack squad. And coming off a Longwood win in triple overtime, he knocked down six threes there. So it's a confident guy. He needs to get hot. That one off the front iron, rebounded by Markel Johnson. Underneath the basket, Devin Daniels puts it in. Devin Daniels. It's a bit too easy. Fletcher A.B. for three. Off the back iron, follows up his own board, and puts it in. You won't see a lot of offensive rebounds, but following his own shot, A.B. gets one to go. The challenge for the Citadel, they play fast because they shoot so many threes. If those don't go down, it increases the possessions for the opposition. And the Wolfpack are taking full advantage. They can build on the lead that much more quickly because of the quick trigger for the Citadel. Devin Daniels, 15 points now, leads the way for the Wolfpack. Reed kicks it out. A whistle blows and a three-pointer made by Tyson Baptiste. Four-point play opportunity here. Really like what Devin Daniels gives this team. Transfer from Utah a few seasons ago. One of those double-figure scores has a good field. Doesn't shoot a great percentage from three at 29 percent. Has struggled the last few games. Double figures only once in the last six. But a confident-looking stroke there. Yeah, he was also had some pretty good high school teammates. Was high school teammates with Josh Jackson, the fourth pick of the 2017 NBA draft. Not the actor from Dawson's Creek. That's correct, yes. Or for Mighty Ducks, depending on the crowd we're dealing with. <laughs> Triple D. Nice cut by Baptiste. Kicks it out to Reed. Got it. Reed. Don't count the Bulldogs out. They're streaky from three. And that's they hoist a lot of them. And they play fast. That's a 6-0 run. Three of their last three from the field. Got to play some defense, though. Bryce with the floater, no good. And a rebound for Alex Reed. In the open floor now, Reed, no good. In the corner. You won't see Andre miss a lot of wide open looks from there. He's about 50-50 from distance. Davis the third knocks it down. How about a 9-0 run for the Bulldogs? Back within 14. Seems to be a lacking in the sense of urgency department for the Wolfpack. Came so easy in the first half. They have lost that edge to begin the second here. Bank not open for Devin Daniels. More transition ball for the Bulldogs. That one off the mark and foul underneath going the other way. Citadel not happy with that, but they got to be happy with the way they've been playing over the last couple of minutes. This is what the Bulldogs do. They have found their identity once again here on the road. Reed gets the three ball. Davis, I don't know about the first or the second, but the third can shoot it. And the bench, well, they love it.
couple of days away from Christmas here, and Pooh Bear's in the house. And the Oakland A's hat also got Elsa in the house, Frozen 2, a big box office hit. Ugly Christmas Ooh. sweater night here in the house. Is that a Green Bay Packers, maybe, sweater? That definitely qualifies as ugly sweater. <laughs> C.J. Bryce from the free throw line ends a 9-0 run for the Bulldogs. C.J. Bryce definitely hasn't looked himself, didn't start for undisclosed disciplinary reasons, came in after that first media timeout, but hasn't really been a factor. Look for him to get going here. Give his team a, a, a little bit of a, some juice. Second chance opportunity for the Bulldogs, and Rice knocks it down. He's got six tonight. Bulldogs went in a half and said, we got to make threes. It's what we do. Five of nine here in the second half in just five minutes of play in the second stanza. Finish the first half four of 18 from three. Daniels equalizes there. Though. Almost like a knuckleball delivery, not much rotation on it. Still counts for three, though. How about 18 points tonight for Devin Daniels? He's been great. Again, he's been in that funk for the last six games or so, only reached double figures once. Has found his confidence in the getaway game. Five points above his average, stolen away by Markel Johnson. In the open floor and slams it home. Markel Johnson. Interesting move here. The Bulldogs going with Brady Spence, a 6'9 freshman. They need to get him in the mess hall, put some weight on him. College game comes at you fast. Didn't get his feet set. Poor delivery. Allowed NC State to get one going the other way. Daniels looking for a push off. Didn't get it. Baptiste from way downtown. No good. Second chance opportunity from Rice. Can't get it to go. Devin Daniels. No good. Rebound. Funderburg gets fouled underneath. Markel Johnson is always hunting those turnovers, trying to generate steals. Spence didn't step into the pass, no receiver coming to it. Johnson translates that defense into some offense going the other way. He's kind of been that spark plug. I mean, you can go back four years. Markel Johnson, like we said earlier, in his 100th game for the Wolfpack this season. Those steals per game in the ACC. This team gets a lot of them. And, and again, they're doing it, Sam, differently than they have in the previous two seasons. Because of those injuries, Coach Keats isn't able to play 9, 10, even 11 guys like he has in spurts in other seasons. That's their identity. That's their DNA. So because of those injuries, they're playing about eight guys. They can't do the full court pressure that Coach Keats loves. They're generating these turnovers in the half court, applying traps in different places, guys diving, digging in down to the low post, and that's getting them going the other way. With that pressure, how is that going to work or not work in ACC play? Oh, that's what wins games for this team. I said, Coach Keats, what have you been most impressed with out of the gates from this squad? They've been competitive in the losses, and they've been able to generate eight wins. He said, my guys play hard, and I love that. He's like, I'm not surprised, because it's the type of players I recruit. But the eight guys in that rotation and the guys in practice are giving their all and maxing out until they need a sub. Fitzgibbons, the kick to Harris. No good, Funderburg fighting for the rebound. Go back to this previous possession here. Take a look at number 11, Caden Rice, and he comes up wincing a bit, grabbing that left knee. Uh, a wiry 6'6", trying to keep Daniels in front, moving gingerly on the bench. They need him to get back out there. They found a little bit of a rhythm. Rice gave him some. But it was a balanced effort from the three-point line. You need your guy back in there to have a shot. Kalen Harris fouling on the rebound attempt there. Still a 20-point lead for NC State with 13.05 left to go in the game. Daniels, down low to your boy. Funderburg has it taken away. Foul going the other way. It's a weird post position. And there's also a double. There wasn't a clean entry. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely calling for him to get the feed down low, but I, that just wasn't an opportunity worth pursuit in that sequence. 
Second foul on DJ. Fitzgibbons down low, spinning in the paint. Can't get a shot off. Ten on the shot clock. Fitzgibbons stepping back. Can't get it to go. Dixon couldn't get it. Strong bounce pass to Ellums. Eighth assist tonight for Markel Johnson. In the paint, looking for contact. Harris gets it. Can't get the bucket to go. So Harris will go to the line and shoot two. Foul will be on Devin Daniels. Look at those distractions back there. Classic Dwight Schrute. Hey, keep in mind, our next all-access with Carolina basketball is tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. In our third episode of the season, our cameras follow the Tar Heels to the Bahamas for the Battle for Atlantis. And the coaching staff reflects on the Heels' return to historic Carmichael Auditorium. All right, since we're friends here, I'm just going to be honest. You yeah. see Yoda back there? Yeah. Not a Star Wars guy. I got to get into it now that I'm a Disney Plus though guy. So yeah. I, I, it might be some avenue that I need to explore because I'm in the dark, man. Self-admittedly, I haven't seen any of Star Wars stuff. Well, look, the Disney Plus thing is uh, amazing. I mean, you literally get everything. This is not a plug. I mean, you, anything that you have watched growing up, maybe Disney, you get that on Disney Plus. And also, of course, Star Wars. And I just want to be a part of the cool kids. I got a kid in Yeah, Star Wars. I'm with you there. I am with you. Fitzgibbons fouled there on the baseline. Markel Johnson's got eight assists tonight, and this is an interesting way to get another one. Markel Johnson, I'm telling you, if you get out and run, he'll get it to you by any means necessary. Helms, the punctuation. Devin Daniels has struggled somewhat in the last six games, most especially the last two, but a big time showing in a variety of ways this evening, giving the Wolfpack the lift that they need. He's a gritty guy. He's a tough matchup at 6'5". He's got some muscle on him, a double-figure score, and he has defensively done it. He's offensively done it. He's had a special game to get him right. Get him right on a getaway game. 18 points for Devin Daniels tonight. Averaging 10.7 per game, but like you said, he was red hot for the first five games, averaging 15 points, but not so hot over the last couple of them. Pretty good stat line there for Daniels tonight, the redshirt junior. I mean, this is one of the six guys that return of their top seven scores from a season ago, 256 of their 292 threes made from a season ago. Back on this roster, ACC Nation. Start to respect this NC State team because they are waiting in the weeds. And everybody's talking about Duke, Carolina, Louisville, Virginia. Who's talking about NC State? Well, let me ask you this. Why, why do you think that is? Look, this isn't a statement game right now, being yeah. up by 23 over the Citadel. That's not what has made attention going, why aren't we talking about Keats's Wolfpack squad? The, the point is, and I sat there with him today, I said, Coach Keats, and, and he's such a charismatic guy, such an open guy. We always have great conversations. I said, Coach, nobody's talking about you guys. He gave me that, that, that smile, <laughs> that, 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 that uh, wry smile. I said, this is what, this is what I love. I don't want everybody to be on board with us. We keep our heads down. We continue to work. And I ask everybody out there watching this game, look at the top six teams in the ACC. Is there one that stands out to you that is definitely the champion? I'm super high on Louisville. Duke is trending upward. We see how exposed Virginia can be, North Carolina as well. But nobody's talking about the Wolfpack. As we got an official review right here. And I just think people need to get on board with this team because of the experience that comes back their style of play their ability to generate offense in a year where offense is hard to come by a lot to like here 
checking on if it was a uh, technical foul or not. It was ruled uh, that it was not, so just a personal foul. Another whistle underneath. It's going to be on Kaylin Harris's third for the Citadel. The Bulldogs started the second half on a 9-0 run. Now an 11-1 run for the Wolfpack, looking to add some more. Jericho Hellum shot a bit long. Baptiste drives, kicks. A good ball movement for the Bulldogs there, results in a foul. A couple of free throws for Kalen Harris. That's a 63 40. NC State out in front after a tough loss to Auburn a couple of nights ago. Coach Keats has to be happy with the way that his team has responded here tonight. Harris just has not been able to get it going tonight. Hey, keep in mind this Sunday. Our ACC Network Weekly Basketball Studio Show, Nothing But Net, returns. Kelsey Riggs, Luke Hancock, Carlos Boozer, and Dylan Cuff will look back for the best games from last week, preview the week ahead, Sunday at 8 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Curious to hear those guys' thoughts on Virginia and their trajectory with their struggles offensively and where they're at right now. Still a dangerous team, but got to figure it out. Pass down low, may have been unintentional. Results in a rebound for C.J. Bryce. Bryce, about 18 feet, no good. C.J.'s a bit of a tough time finding his rhythm tonight. Real difficulty high on that offering from Kalen Harris. Floated and let it go just before his feet hit the ground. Would have been a violation. Said it's two points for the Bulldogs. Six points for Harris tonight. That one off the mark. Helms with the rebound. Puts it back in. 11 points for Jericho Helms tonight. Harris, top of the key. That's good for three. Harris had a 23. Harris was a guy the Citadel were looking at early on and saying if we're going to have a chance, him along with Caden Rice have to give us something scoreless in the first half. It's almost at this point too little too late, but nine minutes left. Can they put get another one of those spurts from beyond the arc? Johnson looking underneath, hey. finds Helms, soft balance, gets a whistle. That was going to be on Caden Rice. His first. You can see him back in the game. Remember, he was grabbing his knee earlier on. And just keeping it with NC State, too, for a second. I mean, there were some basketball pundits last year that thought NC State's non conference record merited them not to go to the NCAA tournament last year, went to the NIT. But this year, you know, Coach Keats has kind of made an effort to try and bolster that non-conference schedule as Rice knocks down the three. Yeah, and I was surprised. I thought the Wolfpack, when they were able to beat Clemson in what felt like winner gets into the tournament, right. loser's NIT bound. I thought that may have been enough. But having been a guy who's won in the, gotten to the round of 32, gotten to the Sweet 16 in another year, and been the last team left out two other seasons, you don't want to put it in the hands of the committee. Amass the wins as you can. Do the work in a very competitive and highly respected conference. And then leave nothing to anybody to decide. Sit there comfortably on Selection Sunday. And the Wolfpack have the team to be able to achieve that. C.J. Bryce to the line for one one now. 17 fouls for the Citadel, 6-4 NC State. C.J. Bryce missing there. 
An 82% free throw shooter. Just a couple tonight. Going back to it though, Sam, I gotta yeah. say, I was very thankful for that NIT year. We were able to play a few games in a tournament my senior year. I was able to become Notre Dame's all-time leading shot blocker. It's that nobody would ever know. And when I was named it in that game, I got the, the record shot block. And at the timeout, they said over the PA, Jordan Corner has become the Notre Dame's all-time leading shot blocker. I waved to the crowd like it's a big deal. There's maybe eight people Nobody's there for the NIT game. <laughs> it was crickets. They didn't care. I acted like it was a big deal. Very tone deaf. But I look back and laugh on that one. We can applaud that one. <laughs> they played one shining moment in layup lines for the NIT game that we were playing and on our home floor. I mean, that, that was just a, that was a very, very bad, bad scenario. <laughs> you don't want to be there, Wolfpack. Fitzgibbons grabs the inbound. Travel call going the other way for the Wolfpack. Yeah, I don't know if that's how... Uh, look, I'm sure you remembered fondly the mayor of South Bend. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure you would have liked that in the NCAA tournament. That's where you want to get to. That's what everybody's playing for. It starts with games like this one for the Wolfpack taking care of business on their home floor. Not having one of those headline losses where everyone's talking about. Did you see that the Wolfpack lost to the Citadel. So you got to like what they've been able to do here. Focused up until this point. Got to close it out. Harris steps back for three. No good. Baptiste with the board. Second chance opportunity here for the Bulldogs. Into the corner. Shot knocked down for Kane Rice. 15 point game. Seven and a hook left. A lot of game. Especially with how the Citadel shoots the three. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm kind of saying. Love the Jolly shirts. A couple of Sparkies here tonight. A couple of nights before Christmas. Really nice crowd in PNC Arena, too. A lot of fans out. Ugly sweater night tonight. A 15-point game here. Seven and a half left to go. Citadel have really turned it around, especially from beyond the arc, shooting 44% this half from deep. Devin Daniels looking for help. Finds Markel Johnson. Step back three. Knocks it down. Gives you everything, doesn't he? 11 tonight for Johnson. Sets the table. He eats sometimes, too. Rice from the corner. No good. Johnson has it poked away. Scrum on the floor. Manny Bates is on it. Jump ball called before the timeout. Can be called. Oh, go to the pack. The senior guard. He does it all for the Wolf Pack. Assists. He can knock down the three, two. Sam, we're taking another break. Let's talk one. I'll be right back. Track, I'll be right back. Seventy-two, fifty-four, six, twenty-six left to go here in this one. Aiden Rice. You look at the difference between the first and second half. It's like two different players, Jordan. Yeah, very resilient. That first half, nothing came easy for him. A guy who really makes this team go. And, and to get that three-point shot going in the second half was huge just to make this thing competitive. Is it out of reach? Maybe at this point, but this thing has not been an embarrassing show. And Wolfpack have looked far from superior throughout because of some of those shots. Rice, nice lay-in. 16 tonight. For the junior out of Columbia, South Carolina. It does need to be reiterated, though. The Wolfpack are the superior team. And have shown that for the majority of this game. Devin Daniels. Floater no good. Rebounded by the Citadel. 
Out in transition, Rice finds an open shot and knocks it down. 17 second half points now for Rice. 6-6 dynamic matchup problem has been absolutely bad here in the second half. Pat Andre had a good first half, not so much here in the second. That one knocked away. It's going the Citadel way. This is what the Citadel does in transition. Guys aren't filling lanes going to the rim. They're filling spots at that three-point line catch and release for a team that lives and dies by that three. They've got a pulse here thanks to that three ball and Kalen Rice. Coach Keats will call a timeout. We were talking to head coach Duggar Balcom too about his philosophy and that you asked a great question about really where that originated and he's he made a good point. He said, look, at VMI and other places I've coached, we are always a smaller team. We have to find a way to play quick and score a lot of points. And this is kind of the way that they have been able to score a lot of points. They rank third in the country right now with 87.1 points per game. Not going to get that tonight, but they've had a good philosophy. Yeah, especially in a service school. I mean, you're not going to get seven footers right. in rolling in service school. So you got to do it with the six footer, the six three guy, the six five guy. It was a tough matchup. That is, everybody has to be able to shoot the ball to get on the floor for the Citadel. But guys that are confident three-point shooters and understand it's a different style of play. Understand what works and what makes this offense run. They're a Drive and kick in the half court, too. Yeah, they're a team that most people maybe know, don't really know a whole lot about, but they have made the most three-pointers in the nation over the last four seasons, which is ridiculous. Fitzgibbons there is off the mark. Not necessarily a team that you would think right away of great three-point shooting team. Stolen away, nice hands, great IQ from Tyson Baptiste. In transition, Alex Reed thought about it, drives, kicks, and a foul. Harris will go to the line. Foul's gonna be on C.J. Bryce. Baptiste is not really a scorer but the guy who manages this team, six assists, but really pushes that tempo and opportunistic at times. Getting guys in the right place. Now, is that baby Yoda in, in the crowd? You no, know, I don't think it is. Or is no. that just Yoda? I believe that's that's normal. And I don't, under I don't understand the craze with the baby Yoda. You don't, you don't get it? That, that I just, I don't get. How about, how Sta about Stanley, I mean, everybody gets Stanley in the office. Yeah, Baby Yoda's a fad that, um, yeah, it's interesting. Mina Kimes was all over the Baby Yoda stuff, and Levitard show is all about it, too. Citadel, all about that three-point shot. Are. 11 of 26 here. The second half. Helms to the hole, no good. In transition, the six-foot Fitzgibbons pointed to the rim like he wanted an alley-oop. That young man with the basketball. Why is he pointing to the sky? 6-0 runs for the Citadel. Trying to get it back within single digits. Knocked away. Out of bounds by Rice. I think Rice wanted to come to a jump start and kick it behind the Bautiste, who was behind him. Kind of got caught up there a little bit. Ultimately shot deflected out of bounds. I'll have another go. Almost thrown away, good save. You have a chance to get single digits here. Baptiste, just a bit short. Kept in bounds. Wild with how this game has gone, but it's not out of hand. Bryce goes to the floor hard, shoe falls off. Citadel hanging around here tonight. <laughs> No one knows more about the ACC than Mark Packer and West Durham. And tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, they'll take you through the last decade with the top games, players, and plays. The Packer and Durham Decade in Review show right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Now, my man, Jordan Cornette, has fixed up a little bit of a decade in review himself. And here it is, the most dramatic ACC national champions. Uh, walk us through this here. Well, Sam, number one sticks out, obviously. That's Deshaun Watson rolling right, finds Hunter Renfro 
Clemson knocks off Alabama their first title and then the dynasty that they now sit at. Number two, I mean, recency bias, whatever you want to call it, but yeah. Mamadi Diakite versus Purdue to knock, on, knock down that shot from Kihei Clark in the Elite Eight to get them to the chip and improbable run with how their season ended a year before to win in overtime versus Texas Tech and the way they did it, the story, I mean, is made for Hollywood. I got to get Notre Dame in there. Arike Agumbawale put herself in the national spotlight yeah. with her in-game heroics, back-to-back -back games, and a chip for the legendary Muffet McGraw. Uh, Notre Dame is not a football school. It's a women's basketball school. It's because of women like Arike Agumbawale. And the rest of the list, I mean, are you going to argue with anything I got on there? No. No, I'm not going to argue with it. And I don't think you. you're leaving anything out. We might have a chance to add on yeah, to that. That's what I was going to say. In the new year, yeah. though, with Clemson, got a real shot to add another title. And, and that's because you've got greatness on the sidelines. There's Cher, there's Beyonce, there's Prince. One name talents, then there's Dabble. I guess when you are known by only one name, that's when you know that you've made it. I think you only call think somebody NC by the State fans name. have turned the volume down on this one right now. Thinking that's going to be our football program one day, and maybe so. Just got to get a dab on the sidelines. And that is no knock on Dave Dorn. Does a fantastic job. There's only one dab right now. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's only one dab right now. CJ Bryce, after getting knocked Bryce. down a couple of minutes ago, looks to be spry and well. 16-point game, C.J. Bryce with 13 points tonight. And a whistleblower is foul. Going to be one on one. Excuse me, foul is going to be on Markel Johnson. That's his first team eighth. fans here. Michael Scott in the building. Man, I think the office is this generation Seinfeld. I'm trying to think of what my favorite episode may have been. There's so many. I fall asleep to the office a lot. I just kind of leave it on. Got to commend this Citadel team, though. Trailing by yeah. 16 with three minutes left. It was a play away, one three away at one point of getting this thing to single digits and putting a little bit of game pressure on NC State. Well, the biggest lead for NC State was 23. Definitely when Michael Scott had to give money to the less fortunate, he's going to pay for their, I think, <laughs> it was, the, yeah, I think Scott's Tots. Scott's Tots. Yeah. Definitely an all-timer. That was my favorite episode. That was going to linger in my head. <laughs> I didn't think it was Scott's Tots. Thunderbird knocks down the free throw, 77 to 60. Three minutes to go, going to take a Big comeback from the Citadel tonight. Oh, nearly stolen away by Jericho Helms. Rice fires from way downtown, no good. And the ball goes out of bounds. All right, coming up for NC State, you look at their upcoming schedule, and this is New York, no knock on the rest of the ACC. Again, this is a wide open conference. No knock on your alma mater as well, but this is a, I, maybe you could say a favorable schedule for NC State? Most likely, two, four, six games they'll be favored in. App State at home after the layover over the holiday. will be challenging, she's gonna shake the rust off and that holiday grubbing that everybody's gonna do. At Clemson, Clemson is down right now, trying to figure out their identity. Notre Dame streaky with the three-point shot. Will it travel? That's a home game for the Wolfpack. Virginia Tech is probably the most dangerous of the six right there. So if you're thinking you want to get some attention, you want to get to the forefront of the conference, you rattle off six wins. And I'll tell you what, by January 19th, you're talking about the Wolfpack a lot more. I need to send a text to my guy Dallin back in studio and say, hey, we might need to yeah. start hyping up the Wolfpack here. What do you think the next step for is for this team? Get, get everybody healthy. Having, having nine guys 
consistently play basketball together. It then becomes that Coach Keats system that we've seen work for the last few seasons. Then they find that rhythm, they get their full identity, and they can really apply that full court pressure. You see how they score. Yeah. There's just not a lot of teams in the country that are able to score like this team, most especially in this conference. And with so much continuity coming back, I was super high on Notre Dame for that reason. They've underwhelmed, but they're starting to find their identity. You shift to the Wolfpack and say, for that same reason, you need to have the belief in Coach Keats' squad what they can do this year going forward. Led him to an NCAA tournament in his first year. Coach Keats. Reverse. No good for Fitzgibbons the third. And a 20-point lead, under two left to go. Thunderbird out of bounds, going the other way. Yeah, how about a triple-double, by the way, for Markel Johnson tonight? 11 points, 10 assists, 10 rebounds. Today was a good day. That's not too shabby. In his 100th game, by the way, too. Congratulations to Markel Johnson. Kick to Kalen Harris, knocks it down. Timeout called by Coach Keats. A couple of substitutions now coming in for the Wolfpack. Pat Andre checking back into the game. Farthing as well into the game for the Wolfpack. Graham fires for three. No good. Crowd wants Graham to get on the score sheet tonight. Pelham's knocked away. Off of the Citadel. Good night for Markel Johnson and company. Helms with five on the shot clock, no good. Rebounded by the Citadel. Under a minute. Going the other way. Under a minute left to go. Triple-double is a rare achievement. In your 100th game, pretty cool way to tie in a performance as such. And Markel, th this is only the fourth in the history of the program. Last triple-double, pretty impressive talent. Dennis Smith did it in 2017 versus Syracuse. So that speaks to the level of talent it takes to get a kind of performance yeah. like that to align itself. But it speaks to the tool bag, the skill set that Mc Markel Johnson has. He can rebound. He's one of the best setup men in the conference in the country. And Coach has asked him to score it more. And he's become a consistent double-figure guy, hovering around 14, 15 points per game. One of the most underrated players in this conference. Don't disagree with you there. Graham looking for help. Ten on the shot clock. Has it knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with the Wolfpack. You said before this game you were very excited to watch this NC State team. What did you learn? tonight well again there's nothing that, that you leave this game and say right did you see what the Wolfpack did versus the Citadel Graham knocks down a three and the crowd goes crazy really cool moment there you love it but going back to the Wolfpack yeah. and answer your question Sam uh, this is a team that you need to keep tabs on they have depth they have skilled players who can shoot it they can put points on the board. They can be disruptive defensively by turning you over. And they have a defined system where the players have bought in with an excellent coach and a very well-dressed one who's happy on the sidelines in Coach Kevin Keats. So NC State will improve to 9-3 and three this season as the final whistle blows. Really?
really good stuff from NC State tonight, Jordan. Very impressive. You handled business, did what you were supposed to do, get away, enjoy the holidays, and get right back to business. Coming up next, nothing but net. So for Jordan Cornette, I'm Sam Ravich saying goodbye from Raleigh. Our entire crew, happy holidays. The final score, 83-63. Good night.